Hi, and welcome to Art with Mrs. Torres. Today we are going to be learning about the first element of art, and that is line. As you can see from the artist that I am showing today, this artist works with a lot of lines. He's a pop artist, and his name is T. Herring. I can't wait to teach you this project. It's going to be fun and really easy. I hope you enjoy it. Let's begin. Hello and welcome to Art with Mrs. Torres. Today we are going to be doing a fun art project. This is a pop art style inspired by an artist named Keith Herring. This is a copy of one of the drawings that he did. And what I want to show you today is one of the elements of art is called line. And that's the first element of art. And so we are going to be using line today by using line in our artwork, something as simple as drawing a few random lines are going to show movement, gesture, and even it will give you the illusion of talking or laughing, uh, vibrancy, radiating lines. So those are the things that we're going to be learning today as we're doing our drawing. Now, what I thought I would do is take an idea from his work, Keith Haring, and then simplify it into three characters. And you're going to design your characters today. And then when we're done designing our characters, however we want them to be dancing, then we will go in with some color. And I'll teach you a couple tricks with the marker. So the first thing we're going to do is gather up our items. Now, the first item you're going to need is paper. So I get the paper out of my printer. Please make sure you gather a few extra sheets. So that's the first thing you're going to need. And the next item you're going to need is a pencil. You're going to need an eraser. You can also use the one on the end of the pencil. You're going to need a Sharpie marker um, for today's work. I like working with Sharpie. If you don't have a Sharpie marker, then please maybe use a black uh, colored pencil or a black crayon. I do not recommend you using the black marker that comes in your crayon box. I will explain that later, but for right now, I'm going to have you gather up some items. So the things you're going to need are five items, actually. You're going to need paper, a pencil, an eraser, a Sharpie marker, or a black crayon or colored pencil, and something to color with. Now, I'm going to be working with my Crayola markers today. However, you could also use a box of crayons. That would work, too. So five items. Go ahead and pause the video, gather those items up, and then meet me back here for our lesson. All right. You should have gathered your items up. The first thing you're going to need is your paper. Make sure you have more than one piece of paper because when we're working, especially with Sharpie marker, it is going to bleed onto that back of the paper and then onto your desk. You want to make sure we have a couple pieces of paper underneath. You're going to need your pencil and you're going to need your eraser nearby. It's the only thing you need right now. All right, now the artist, Keith Herring, was a pop artist. He uh, was born in 1958. I'm gonna kind of zoom this in so you can see a picture of him. He was born in 1958, and he died very early at the age of 31 in 1990. He learned to draw from his father. His dad would doodle little pictures, and then Keith would sit next to him, and he would practice doodling as well. And this fact really um, inspired me because this is how I learned to draw. I learned to draw from my dad. My dad was not an artist, but he doodled. And when he would draw a little picture, I would sit right next to him when I was a child. And that's how I learned to draw. So the first thing we're going to be doing is what we do always in our project is we draw a dot in the center of the paper. That light dot helps us space everything out. So for our characters, we're going to be drawing three char characters. So we want to place those onto our area to begin with to make sure that they all fit. So if we look at his artwork, we're going to see that he did multiple characters in this painting. So we're just going to be choosing three. So the first one, the center character here, um, he doesn't, he or she, it's, a, it's just a non-discriminate character. We're going to be just drawing a circle for the head to begin with. So right here, where that dot is, and by the way, your paper should be horizontal. We're going to just kind of move our hand like this to start to form our circle right above that dot. 
So I'm moving my hand in a circle. So if you're right-handed, you'd be doing it this way. And that's just gonna help us make that circle. So as we move our hand around, gently around and around and around, once we get it to the size we like, we're slowly gonna start to lower our pencil down so it starts to touch down onto the paper. So you can see my circle is not really dark. We don't want it very dark because a lot of it we're gonna be erasing. Don't worry about it being perfectly round. It does not matter. Now, the cool thing about today is that you might have heard people say, oh, I can't draw a stick figure. I am not an artist. I'm going to tell you today we are going to draw stick figures, and then we're going to turn our stick figures into our characters. So this is my trick for helping me draw people whenever I have to draw a person. So the first thing I'm going to do is after I've drawn my circle is I'm going to draw a line coming down for the body. So I'm gonna draw it not very dark because we're gonna be erasing it later and don't make it too long because you have to save room for the legs. So there is my line right here for my body. We're gonna start with this character and then you guys can create your other characters later, but let's do the one that's kind of similar to this first. You can see mine's a little bit different, but it's the same idea. It's a character jumping in the air. So once you draw that line here, then we're going to draw a line right across here for the shoulders. And we're gonna draw a line down here for the hips. Now we don't want this line too big, so too long. So we're gonna go ahead and draw a line for the hips. Now, as you can see from here, it kind of looks like a capital I. Now from here, this is the fun part. You get to decide where you want your arms and your legs going. So in this character here, if we made our lines coming down on an angle, his arms would be tilted down. If we make the angle of the arm going up, then the arm would be facing up. You could do one of each if you'd like to. So for my character and my picture here, I have the arms going kind of down and out and I had my legs going down and out for this character. So you're going to decide. So first you're going to make the elbow. So here's your arm going out and then you're going to decide where the elbow is going to go. So maybe I'm going to make the arms going up this time. Maybe you want to have one arm up and one arm down like this. You could do that. So first very lightly because we're going to be erasing these lines. Go ahead and figure out where you want your arms to be. And then we're not going to draw the hands. This is just kind of like the, the bones, the skeleton. And then we're gonna draw our stick figure legs. So you have to decide which way you want your legs to be going. So I'm gonna be having this leg going out. That's my hip. So my leg's gonna be going out and down. And maybe this leg is gonna be going out and down, but not tilted in quite as much as the first leg like that. So this foot's going to be a little higher than this foot. Now you could do something totally different than mine. Okay, so that's character number one. So now what we're going to do is we're going to start to outline character number one so you can understand the concept of what we're doing. So we've done line, our first element of art, and now we're going to take that line, and even this is a line. It's a curved line, but it's still a line. Now we're going to take that element of art and we're going to draw our character. So I want you to think about this skeleton as the bones inside the character. So what we're going to do is we're going to trace around the bones of the character, making sure our line never touches the bones. So we're going to start right here for the shoulder. So we're going to go out and then you're going to trace whichever direction you made that uh, line going, you're going to trace right next to it. So I'm going to go, I'm going up. Now is time to do the hand. So let me show you his examples for his hands. People always say, oh, hands are so hard to draw in art. Well, look, he's made it so simple for us. They're basically just kind of like a curve, like a backwards P or a forwards P. So that's what we're gonna do. So for my hand, I'm gonna be making my hand go this direction. So I'm just gonna make a backwards P. And then I'm gonna go down the other side of my arm. And I'm gonna go around the curve of the elbow and I don't wanna bring it in too far because I have to do the side of the body. I'm gonna match it on the other side. So you're gonna do your other side, following right next to the line that you drew. Now for this hand, I could turn the hand in this way or I can make the hand go out this way. So maybe on this uh, character, I'm gonna make his hand bending in this time like that. 
and then you can go back down around the elbow. And I'm going to erase this little bump here. I couldn't make up my mind which way I was going to make the hand go. And then now you're going to do the side of the body. So you want to have a lean character or more a wide character. It's totally up to you. If I look at his artwork, he kind of varies his lines. Oops, that's mine. That's not his. So you see he has this character a little wider and this character is a little more narrow. So kind of easy. You could just decide which you want to do. So I'm going to bring my lines kind of wide here. And then we're going to trace around the, the leg. So my leg is going out, down, and then it's time to make the foot. So if you look here, his feet are exactly the same as the hands. It's just a simple curved loop. It's kind of flat on the bottom and then a little bit sharper point at the end, which would be the heel of the shoe. So here's my foot. I'm gonna bring my toe tilted down. I'm going to bring it up on a sharp point here and then back to the middle. Then I'm going to come over on this side and do the same thing. So here's the side of the body. I'm going to go following the curve of my leg down to my toe. Loop it behind. Don't forget to go behind this line. A little bit of a sharp line going up and over and then close it off in the middle. So once you've finished your character, then what you can do is uh, either use the end of your pencil or you can use your magic rubber eraser to erase the center line in here. Now the first thing we're going to erase is the bottom of the head. So I'm going to hold my hand like this when I'm erasing to make sure that I don't erase the, um, that I don't wrinkle my paper. Um, what I'm going to do right now that you might want to do too is just retrace the top of the head here just so that you don't lose that little part of the circle because I made it pretty light. I'm going to go back to erasing now. So I'm going to erase all of my bones, the skeleton, my stick figure inside my character. And then I'm going to hold my drawing up next to Keith Haring's drawing, and you're going to see how my drawing looks different than his. So first off, my character has a giant head. It almost looks like he has a space helmet on. So uh, you see Keith, Her Keith Haring's characters, their heads are a little smaller. So if I wanted to, if I didn't like that, I could go in and change it. So now I could alter it. I could make the head a little smaller if I wanted to. I could change the direction of a hand. If I didn't like the way the hand was going, I could change that. I could change my feet. And you're just going to work with it until you're happy with your drawing. So I'm going to erase the space helmet. I think it's a little bit too big. And you'll notice that my paper doesn't wrinkle when I'm erasing because I'm holding my hand like this and I'm erasing in this section. I always tell my students, you're erasing inside the duck's mouth. So as long as your eraser is in this little space right here, this is a duck quacking, then your paper isn't going to wrinkle. You can erase actually very hard and your paper won't wrinkle. If you go outside of the duck's mouth and any part of your paper, your paper's gonna wrinkle. All right, so my first character is done. Now I'm gonna move over and draw two more characters. So um, just choose whatever side you wanna draw and you're gonna look back at Keith Haring's work and now you're gonna decide where you want your next character to be drawing. So I'm gonna be doing this one. I think this is a great little character over here. So I'm gonna kind of line up my dot with where my dot was before for the head. So maybe right over here, I think I'm gonna have enough room if I do that. I'm gonna draw a circle for the head, nice and light. I kind of move my hand around until I'm happy with my circle. Then I'm going to create my uh, skeleton bones. So I'm gonna start with the body. So if you want your character to be bending, see how this character's bending, he's kind of tilted this way then to help you with that, you're gonna take your line, the element of art line, and you're gonna curve it slightly. So if I curve that line like this, that's going to help me when I'm drawing my character bent later. I'm gonna draw my hips in, 
I'm going to draw my shoulders in. So I could tilt my shoulders in this direction. I could tilt my shoulders this direction. I could make them straight across. So let's see what he did. He had his line straight across for his arms, but you can see this character is tilted. This character is doing some kind of fun motion over here. So you'll have to decide. I think for mine, I'm actually going to tilt my line just a little bit like this. And then I'm going to make one arm from the shoulder line here, one arm going out and down. And then I'm going to make that hand kind of pointing backwards when I get ready to draw my hand. So I'm going to go like this just to remind me that's the direction I want my hand to be going. And then on this arm, I'm going to bring this arm up. Now I don't have a lot of room because this hand's in the way. So I'm going to do a nice bend right here. And then I think I'm going to make that hand going this direction. So I'm just putting that little mark there to remind me where I want to put my hand later. And then I'm going to now create uh, my body. So I'm going to curve. Oh, I forgot the legs. Okay, so let's see. Where could I put my legs? So I could have my legs walking. I could have one leg going this way. And then the foot would go here. I could have the other leg maybe kicking up into the air a little bit higher. Like that. I think I'm going to extend my arm down a little longer. Doesn't that look like it needs to be a little longer? That's the best part about this. We're just kind of blocking it out. You kind of can see the direction that your character is going to be moving. And all we've done is drawn a stick figure. So whenever somebody tells you that they, all they can do is draw a stick figure, you can remind them that that's what Keith Haring did. He drew stick figures. Now I'm going to retrace the top of the head here. Remember, I forgot to do that last time. That way that you can see my line a little better on camera and it'll remind me that's going to be the head. And that kind of matches this head. Now we're going to do what we did before. We're just going to trace around our shape. There's my backwards P, making sure that you don't bump into the line. You kind of want to make it balanced. I'm going to trace around this one. Now, if I'm going too fast, you know what to do. You just pause that video and meet me back. Whenever you're ready, push play. All right, next, once you get your arms done, it's time to create the body. Now, I showed you how to do this curve here. So if I'm drawing a curve here, I want the rest of the body to match that. So if we were bending over, our spine is bending, so our body would be bending also. So this body would be bending this way. The back would be bending also. I think this hand is in the way. So watch what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna erase this because I really want to have a good curve on the back. And I'm going to bring that elbow out even farther. So there's my bend. And then I can bring my hand out a little farther. That way it's not bumping into the back. So from here, I'm going to now retrace this pattern of the leg. So I'm going to go behind the leg, down, this would be the heel of my foot, my shoe, or my bare foot. I almost made a boot. I'm gonna go up, over the knee, back here. The other leg is gonna go here, and down. And I'm gonna make this foot kind of looking like he's kicking. So I'm gonna make a straight line here, toe, up over and back. Now when I'm finished with this, you can always change it later. If you made one of your shoes too big or feet too big, or you want your toes more pointed, you can fix that all once we erase the bones inside. So back to my magic of eraser, back to my duck, and I'm erasing in the duck's mouth, and all I'm erasing is the center part, the bones of your drawing, And when you're finished erasing all of this, we're gonna move on to our third character. Make sure you erase the bottom of the face too. We don't wanna have the bottom of the face there. It's kind of just a little outline of the character, a real simple character. So now we've got our third space over here. 
we're going to decide what we're going to do for that one. So let me go back to his image here and look at all these characters and see which one I want to do. So I kind of like that bend over character, but I don't think I have enough room for him. This guy's kind of fun, but I kind of like this guy too. I think I'm going to use this one. So you're going to look and see which one you want to draw or create your own. You could do a character standing on his head, doing handstand, a somersault. So you decide. I'm going to go where I'm going to match how I did my dot before, figuring out where I want to place my head. I'm going to trace my circle. Remember, I'm taking my fingers and I'm moving them in a gentle circle around. You notice my pencil is not even touching the paper. And then it just kind of comes down nice and soft. I'm going to create my shoulders. I'm going to look back at his work. His shoulders are going to be straight this time, but I'm going to be shooting one arm up in the air and bending that elbow. I'm going to put this right here so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm going to make my shoulders. I'm going to make a short body. Hips. And now I can work on my arm. So this arm, he just has going straight up. So I'm just gonna go like this and I'm gonna tilt that arm out. And this one goes out and down and this way. So that's where the hand will go. Then I'm going to figure out the legs. So this, on his picture, he's got kind of a curve on the back here and his legs go forward and down. So from the end of my hip here, I'm gonna make a, a line that will copy this one. Down, down, and then my toe. And then I'm gonna make this leg. So he's got this leg going up and down. So I think I'm gonna exaggerate it more. I think I'm gonna bring it up a little higher. So the knee goes a little higher. And the foot is a little bit higher off the ground. So I think I'm gonna change the hips like that. Okay, we've done our skeleton. Now you're gonna trace around your skeleton bones. So by now you totally know what you're doing. You don't even need me anymore. You could pause the video, go ahead and do this on your own if you want to. Decide how wide you want your character's body to be. So for here, since the head is here, I'm gonna actually start the arm right here next to his head. Trace around for his hand, and down. And then notice this, he does one continuous line here. So let me try that. So I'm gonna go all the way past where the hip would be. I'm gonna bring that line in, down, over, around the toe, up, back, under, over, once I have this all traced out, maybe that's supposed to connect. I think that's better. There you go. So once I have it drawn out, I'm gonna get my eraser and erase, and that's where you can go back in and fix it. So if it doesn't look right, something looks a little wonky, you can just erase it and make it look right. So if you have one arm that's like as skinny as a piece of spaghetti and another arm that's really thick, like a noodle, then you're gonna wanna erase one arm and make it a little wider to match the first arm. If you have one shoe that's bigger than the other or a foot that's bigger than the other, just go in and fix it before we get to the Sharpie marker. All right, so there are my characters. Erasing the dots out of the middle of their heads. So now we're gonna go in and use our Sharpie marker and draw some gesture lines also. So. My pencil, I'm gonna put that off to the side. We still will be using our eraser later. Now, if you are not using a Sharpie marker and you are gonna be using a crayon for outlining, this is important. I need you to erase all the lines you don't wanna keep right now. Because if you are tracing with a black crayon and you go to erase your pencil lines afterward, you're gonna smear your crayon. So if you're using a crayon and not a Sharpie marker, I will need you to erase your lines you don't wanna keep right now. So go in there and do a really good job erasing any of those like lines like there. See how I have two different 
uh, lines for my feet. If you're gonna be using a crayon, you can need to take care of that now. Now, if you're using a sharp marker, you can erase all your lines later because it won't smear. I'm using a Sharpie. So now I'm going to go in with my Sharpie marker and I'm gonna start tracing over my lines. Now remember, you should have another piece of paper underneath here because your ink is gonna leak through. I'm gonna start right where I began here. I'm gonna put my hand resting on the paper and you wanna work fairly quickly when you're working with the Sharpie marker. The slower that you draw, the more bumpy and jagged your line's going to be. So don't worry as you're tracing about being right exactly on the pencil line. If you're a little bit over the line, it won't matter. No one's gonna see it because you're gonna erase those lines later. But I will tell you that the faster that you draw, the cleaner your line is going to be. Now, once you're done tracing your character the first time, we are gonna go back over all of these lines a second time to make our outline a little bit thicker. I'm gonna show you when I'm done here what that does and how that really makes your artwork a little bit more bold and it makes it more like pop art. So this was my first time going around my pencil line. I'm gonna show you what it looks like when you go a second time around. You can see that my lines are a little bit more bold. They look a little bit more cartoony and a lot more finished. Look at the difference between this and this. And that's only because I went over every line two times. So now I'm gonna go back in and I'm gonna trace a second time. Now here's another trick. If you're using a Sharpie marker, you have a point and then you have kind of the edge where it's a little wider. So what I do is I tilt my hand slightly on an angle. Now, if you wanna practice on a piece of scratch paper before you start doing this, what it does is if I draw straight up and down, I'm gonna get a very skinny line. So watch, I'm gonna retrace the line right now with my point. And, and you can see it's a little bit thicker, but there's not a huge change. However, if I use the side of my pen and I trace around, so I'm holding it a little bit more on an angle, you can see that my line is a lot thicker and you can do it really quick. So by holding it on an angle, as I slide it down and I'm just tracing right next to the original line. So you can see it's getting a little wider. Another trick with Sharpie markers is that as you're working, you might slip up and see, you know, leave a little gap right there. Just go back in with the tip to kind of fill that space in. I also find that your lines are a little cleaner if you pull the line towards you instead of pushing it away. So you, if you have a choice about going up or bringing it down, for me, and now maybe you're different, but for me, I get a cleaner line if I pull the line down toward me, like toward my body, instead of pushing it away. When I push it away, I feel like my hand is a little bit more bumpy. So if I have a choice, I will pick up my pen and always pull it toward my stomach, kind of toward me, always going toward me like this. You see, I'm pulling it toward me. Now, when I get to this place here, I could push it up, but I would rather bring it down to me. So that's just a little trick that I find really helps with my marker pen. If you notice my hand is constantly moving, I'm changing the angle so that I'm more comfortable. Now, if I was not on camera, you would be seeing my paper rotating the whole time I'm working. Like if I was gonna do that curve, I would turn my paper like this and I would curve the paper. I, I mean, turn my paper. So when I curve my hand, I'm pulling it toward me and then I would flip it back again. So if that works better for you, go for it. I just don't wanna make you dizzy as I'm moving my paper around here. Once you're done tracing one, you're going to go ahead and trace your other two characters. So I'm gonna pause the video so I don't bore you to tears as I'm tracing mine. You're gonna go ahead and pause the video, go ahead and trace your two other characters and then meet me back here and we'll do some other things with our characters. So go ahead and pause the video and meet me right back here when you're done inking your other two characters. Well, welcome back. So you have outlined your three characters and you've made sure all of your lines are thick. Now, if you only outlined them one time and your line's really skinny, I want you to pause the video and go back again over your lines so they're nice and thick. 
thicker you can make those lines and make sure they all kind of match. You can see that this is a little skinny compared to this one, so I might touch that one up a little bit. So what this is doing is we're giving kind of that pop art feel. Everything's got a big, heavy black outline. He, Herring, worked very quickly. He worked with either markers or paint brushes filled with black paint when he was doing his images. So the next thing that he did was he wanted to use a line to show movement. So you can see by just drawing a few simple lines, either two or three, they give you the illusion of movement. So lines facing this direction, pointing up and down, give you the illusion that this character is jumping up in the air. You see that? So I might want to make some lines that make my character look like he's jumping. Now you'll notice my lines don't match. I need to go over them one more time so that they have the same thickness as my lines above. So another way that he did lines was by drawing them on an angle or curved to show movement. So here you can see that this character is break dancing. So he's got these lines here to show that he's placed his hands quickly hard down on the ground because he's jumped. You get that feeling right there by those radiating lines that are going like this. This line makes him look like he's stomping his foot. These curved lines make the character look like their arms are moving. So maybe we wanna make our arms look like they're moving. So we're just gonna draw a few lines side by side. Try to double them up as you're drawing them. I want my whole body to look like it's moving. So I'm gonna kind of make these ones a little bit longer on this side. I don't have room to draw three, so I'll just do two over there. And maybe I want that foot to look like it's stomping. And then another trick is to make the radiating lines. So you think about like these kind of look like the sun, lines that are radiating kind of in a curve shape. This would either give you the illusion that this person is glowing, that they're yelling, that they're laughing, um, just something that kind of puts a little action into the picture. So, you can do that by making radiating lines. So you just kind of think about making rays of the sun around your head. A lot of his paintings are called radiating. So he has like the radiating baby painting where he draws a baby crawling and he has these little radiating lights shining around the, the door, little adorable baby. If he wants a dog to look like it's barking, he does the same thing. He does those same radiating lines. Um, as I'm working, I'm noticing I'm getting a little ink on the back of my hand. I got a little smudge here. I'm not worried about that. When you're all done and you've drawn all of your movement lines, then the next thing that we're going to do is make sure that we've erased all of our pencil lines. So you want to make sure your ink is dry. I'm a lefty. I always end up getting a little ink on my hand. Usually it dries pretty quick. Every once in a while I'm working a little too fast and my ink will smudge a little bit. So I'm going to use my magic rubber eraser. Remember, you're not doing this if you did in crayon. So I'm going to go in. If you don't have a magic rubber eraser, you can also use the end of your pencil. Uh, speaking of pencils, my favorite pencil is Ticonderoga. Their erasers don't tend to uh, get hard and smear those dark pink lines. You can see that they erase really nicely. Um, but I do like to use my magic rub eraser. I'm erasing inside of that crook of my hand, the duck's mouth. I'm using my hand to brush those crumbs off of the table, completely off. So just do your best to get rid of all your eraser lines. And if you want to add any other visual elements to your drawing, now's the time. So for instance, maybe you want your characters holding something like some signs, or do you want maybe 
to put some block letters above their head that spell art, A-R-T. So in mine, I decided to actually write A-R-T right on their bodies, but I could have had this character holding a sign and maybe this one um, had a sign that was kind of bouncing off of him and I could use gesture lines to look at like, like it was bouncing off of him. This character could be holding a balloon. I've got a big space right here where I could have put a balloon that had a letter in it. Maybe you want to put the initials of your name in your characters, or maybe you want to leave them simple. It's up to you. So if you do want to write anything in here, you can go ahead and do that. I always, if I'm going to do lettering, I start with my pencil first. So art, three letters, that's easy. I'm going to start uh, right here with my center letter, which would be R. And the first thing I'm going to do is kind of just draw my R nice and light with my pencil, making sure it's kind of right in the middle. My A would go over here. Now you could make all different kinds of lettering styles. You could do bubble lettering. Uh, you could draw, you know, whatever style that you like. Script lettering, you could do it in cursive. It doesn't have to say art. And then I'm gonna go in with my sharpie marker. And I taught you this trick already. To make my thick line, I'm gonna hold my pen on its side. And this time I'm just gonna do every line twice before I move on. So once, twice, once, twice. And clean up my edges kind of just by using the tip of my pen. Now I could make my bottoms of my letters have a little foot on them. You could draw little dots on the end of your lines. So I'm using my pen on an angle. Try to remember to pull your pen towards you, not drag it away. When you're all finished with your lettering, I'm gonna go back in, erase any of your pencil lines. I'm gonna start with this one because I know this ink is dry because that was my first one I drew. Doesn't take very long for Sharpie marker to dry or absorb into the paper. When you're all finished, now it's time to color. So I'm gonna move my eraser, pencils, pens off the way. I'm gonna brush all my crumbs away. Let's look at the back of my paper. See how it leaked through? It not only leaked through the back of the paper, it leaked onto this paper. Let's see if it leaked onto the one behind that. Sometimes if I'm really heavy handed with my pen, it'll leak onto the back side. Look at it, it actually leaked through here. It could have gotten onto my desk had I not had another piece of paper. So you definitely wanna get permanent marker on your desk. All right, from here, we're gonna move on to coloring. I am gonna be using my Crayola markers. So the way I do my Crayola markers, um, if I was here in my house, I would be putting them in a coffee cup. But since I'm doing this on camera today, my other trick is to kind of shake the crayon, uh, Crayola, either crayons or markers, into my hand like this. And then I just rest them on the table so all the colors are facing out. I like to have my colors kind of in rainbow order. So I just kind of do the colors of the rainbow. Um, they're a little easier for me to grab this way. They don't come in the box like that. I just kind of move them around so I'm happy with the order. Maybe I'm just being weird, but that's what I do. Okay, moving on to color. So what do we want to do for color? So you got lots of choices here. You could make each character different. You could do one character in polka dots, one character in stripes, and maybe one character all in uh, zebra stripes. A rainbow color. If you notice, Keith Haring's work is very simple. He did not do that. I'm going to tell you a little bit more about him while we're coloring. So I am choosing to do my characters in primary colors. So I'm going to do red, yellow, and blue um, for my primary characters. However, you might want to do maybe one character, one color, one character, another, and then combine the two colors in this character. Leave it up to you. So a little bit more about Keith Haring. Oh, wait, before we do that. Sorry, I'm so excited to be teaching you this. When you're drawing with your marker, okay, I'm using this kind of Crayola marker, but you might not have this style. You might have the style that's kind of a little bit more rounded point on the end. It doesn't matter. Whatever, whatever kind of marker you have, 
If you hold it straight up and down, you're gonna get a skinny line. If you hold it on its side, just like the Sharpie marker, you're gonna get a wider line. So if we're gonna be coloring this in, I really want you to try your best to color nice and slow in one direction. So I'm gonna hold this one up so you can see. If you look close, you can kind of see my pen lines where I'm dragging it across the paper in one direction. You can see a little bit if you look up close where I traced around the edge to kind of clean up my little spots that I missed. So here I'm gonna try it right now. So if I hold it straight up and down, this is gonna take me like, I don't know, until next year to fill this in. That's gonna take forever. But if I put my paper, I'm gonna tilt it because I'm a lefty. I gotta kind of turn my paper here. But if I take my pen and I hold it on its side like this, watch how fast I can fill this space in. So I'm just gonna start from one end and pull it to the next. Don't worry if you leave little dots behind, we'll correct all that later. Now look at how quickly I can go down and fill this space in. Now look at this one here. I'm gonna go all the way across to the elbow, right over the letter A. And then I can go back up here and I can fill this in. I'm still going the same direction, all the way down. So you can see how much faster it is to color if you've got your pen on an angle. Then you can just go back up right here and trace down the side to fill in all those little spaces that you miss by using the tip. Isn't that a neat trick? So what that does is it gives it a little bit more professional look when you're all finished because all your lines are pretty much going the same direction. So as I am coloring, I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about key caring. You're coloring one of your characters as I'm doing this. All right, so I did tell you already about uh, that his father was the one that taught him to draw, just like my dad taught me how to draw. And his father was not uh, you know, a professional artist. He just liked doing cartooning. And then Keith Herring decided he wanted to find a way to show the world his art. So he was down at the subway. Subway is like an underground train. He was down in the subway waiting for the train to come. And he noticed while he was sitting there waiting forever for the train to get there, that there were these advertisements on the wall. And while he was sitting there waiting, he thought, these walls are so boring because they have these advertisements. But if there wasn't an advertisement up there, there was just a blank piece of black paper sitting there. So nobody did. He decided that the next time he was going to wait for the train, he was going to bring a piece of chalk with him. So he put a piece of chalk in his pocket. He went down, he was waiting for the subway to get there. And he quickly went over to the black piece of paper and he drew a really fast character, kind of like one of these characters without the letters in it. He drew one of these little quick characters and he drew it super duper fast with white chalk. Now you might be thinking, wait, isn't that graffiti? Isn't that bad that he's drawing on a, you know, a wall? But he wasn't using paint. He wasn't using Sharpie marker that couldn't get washed off. He was using chalk. You could smear it and rub it right off with your hand. Well, each day that he would go to the subway, he would grab another piece of chalk and he would look and find another wall that needed some happiness on it and he would draw another happy picture and another happy picture and another happy picture and pretty soon he started getting a lot of attention. Not necessarily always good either. So the, fam the, the people that were waiting, the families that were waiting to board the subway, they loved him. They thought it was awesome. It gave them something to do. They were getting to experience this amazing art that was just drawn really quick on the walls. But every once in a while, a policeman would come by and then he would get in trouble from the policeman for drawing. Well, pretty soon the policeman started to recognize his artwork and they because they, they would take the subway and they'd say hey I've seen your artwork and they started to really even appreciate Keith Haring's art. Well as he got famous people started buying his artwork and pretty soon he started making a lot of money for his drawings. I mean a lot and all of his artwork was going into museums now and at one point Keith Haring realized something. He was feeling kind of sad. He was really missing the fun part of art that everybody got to have his art, not just the rich people, not just the rich people that could afford his paintings for thousands and thousands of dollars, because that's not what he wanted. And that's not the way his dad taught him to draw either. It wasn't art for the rich. It was art for everyone. So you know what he did? He created a store 
to sell his artwork in. And he called it the pop shop. Because remember, I told you this is pop art. So he called it the pop shop. Cute name, right? Well, fancy Ludy Doo artists around him, they, they thought this was so lame. Like, why are you having a store to sell your artwork in? You should be making thousands of dollars. And instead, you're, instead you're selling stickers and you're selling buttons for a dollar. You should be making big money for your art. But that's not what he wanted. He wanted everyone to have his art. So this way kids could go in after school and they could come in with a couple, you know, quarters in their pocket and they could walk out with artwork done by Keith Haring. He sold t-shirts and mugs, coffee mugs and stickers and notebooks and all kinds of things that everybody could enjoy his artwork. So that was one really cool thing I loved about Keith Haring. I have another really special thing about Keith Haring that I love. And that is that Keith Haring loved to work with kids. So most artists, they wanted to do all their artwork themselves. They didn't want anyone near them when they were doing their artwork. And then they would charge these huge expensive rates for their art, but not Keith Haring. He got hired to do a mural and he told them he would not paint the mural unless he could have his assistants help him. Well, the person that hired him thought his assistants were going to be these big professional artists, but you know who he hired? He went to the local elementary schools and he asked kids, do you want to come and paint a mural with me? And he took all these kids into the town where he was working and he laid out these big tarps on the ground. So picture like those tarps that you see that they usually kind of the color is usually blue and you'll see them and people put them, you know, over things so they don't if it's raining, things don't get wet. Well, he would lay these tarps on the ground and then would bring out Sharpie markers, just like what we just used today. He would lay out these big Sharpie markers with big, big fat tips on them. And he would give them to the kids and he said, go ahead, have at it, draw whatever you want, as long as it's happy and it makes you smile. He didn't want mean things, but he wanted happy things. And he said, draw dancing, draw animals, draw hearts, draw smiley faces, anything you want. So these kids drew all over these tarps and then he would go back in over that and then he would draw his painting around that. So his murals ended up being so amazing and beautiful and they were loved by everyone and children were a part of those. So I just thought that was a really a neat fact that I learned about Keith Haring. So I hope that today you had fun learning about Keith Haring, our amazing pop artist and I hope you are inspired by his work. I hope it made you think a little bit more about a simple thing like a stick figure can actually be art. I hope you enjoy learning about line and that's one of the true elements of art. We can use line to outline something, we can use line to show movement, and we can use line to show emotion. So I it's had a great time teaching you today and I really hope that you had fun with me and I will see you for our next lesson. Have a wonderful day.